Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Carolyn here. Tonight we're going to talk about social media. Now when internet, Facebook, Skype, uh, even cell phones, when this new technology became available, it was advertised as a way to connect, even globally connect. And to be honest, it absolutely is. But now what? What has happened to social media and our society because of social media? Social media isn't always so social, is it? I have listed 10 pitfalls to social media and I have a challenge afterwards. Okay, one of the biggest social media pitfalls is there's no face-to-face -face time, really. And you lose a lot of true social interaction because you're so busy typing away that you don't have an opportunity to actually engage with somebody for real. Okay, uh, There's a lot of scams on social media. You can have your information out there and now somebody else gets your information and they can tell you whatever they want and they can scam you out of time, money, or even worse, you know, your, your own personal information. Another pitfall is we get to say whatever we want. No filter. And unfortunately, some people do this quite often and quite painfully and hurtfully. Uh, that being said, another, the fourth pitfall is that we can hurt people severely by what we say. Look at all the cases of bullying suicide because of social media. We can go out there and say what we want, get people on our side, and treat people like crap. And what are they left to do? Because this becomes their life, social media is their way of interacting with people and it becomes their reality, what do they have left? After they've been bullied so hard and made to feel so shameful in so many ways, they feel there's no way out and it can really, truly come to the point of not just hurting people, but causing people to kill themselves. Another pitfall, number five, we open our lives completely to predators. Whatever we say, whatever we do, whatever information we share, it's out there. And by having that out there, we are more and more and more available to predators. Uh, Pictures of children online can be used in many nasty pornographic ways. Uh, the information that you give, your birthday, your phone number, your address, without even thinking, you give it to one person on Facebook and voila, everyone has it. Those who are friend and those who are foe. Uh, number six, lies galore. We look at items from the news. We look at random items that people pose or post as facts. We can post anything we want and we can ask people to repost anything. And does anybody ever do research on it to figure out if it's actually true or not? Probably not enough people do that. Seven, pitfall number seven, indoctrination. Look at all of the people who have been indoctrinated into ISIS, into false religions, into any other cultic or occultic behavior or negative social behavior because of social media. I can get to you in a multitude of other countries right now just with this medium and I couldn't ever have done that before. I would have had to come to you or you would have had to come to me. Now we have global indoctrination. 
Pitfall number eight, unrealistic comparisons. Look at me, here I am, belle of the ball, and now you feel forced to live up to my lifestyle, or I feel forced to live up to your lifestyle. Either way, it's unrealistic because we are different people, separate, different people living different lives with different input, and yet we feel forced to keep up with the Joneses. Pitfall number nine, pressure to do or be someone that we're not. Going along with the other one, I can make you feel like you have to be this pretty, this smart, this uh, financially secure. I make you. I might make you feel like you have to have your life this way or that way, and the pressure is intense for some people who don't have the ability or the younger generation who hasn't had the experience to be able to stand up to something like that pressure. Pitfall number 10, it can be a big, big time waster. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't some good things on social media, but we can all catch ourselves wasting time following social media of one sort or another instead of living life. So instead, I have a challenge for you. Meet someone face to face. Now, by someone, I mean spend time with your friends. Spend time with your family. Spend time face to face or on the actual phone with somebody instead of texting or sending a message through social media. Again, I'm not saying that there's no reason to be sending a text, that there's no reason to be sending a message through social media. It's not all bad, but it's certainly not all good either. I'm going to give you an example. This weekend on Friday, Saturday night, I spent time with a girlfriend and we talked about a whole lot of things. We did a lot of personal growth. We caught up with each other's lives and we caught up with where we want to be with our lives. We talked about goals and dreams and aspirations and ways to actually get to those goals. We talked about accountability, how to keep each other on track so that we can meet or perhaps even exceed the goals that we have set for each other and for ourselves. On Sunday, I went and just had a fun social time with people from my church. We went to uh, one person's house. We saw a movie. It was hilarious. And I'm so grateful that I went. And we just had a great time socializing, watching the movie, and having fun getting to know each other a little bit better. And hearing a little personal good news from one of the couples that was there. It was very exciting that they were able to share this news with all of us. And then today, I went to lunch with two ladies. Um, there had been an absence of one of them for a time being, and we were able to get together and catch up with each other's lives and just really reconnect in a way that you can't do by text or by social media. We connected. And this is something that, this has been one of the best weekends that I have had in a long, long time. And I can truly say it's because of that face-to-face -face meeting in each of those three situations that really boosted all of my emotional being. I am completely feeling like I'm refilled, re-energized, reinvigorated, and ready to go out there and start a new week. So I challenge you, this week, make some time to have either actual phone conversation or a face-to-face -face with someone 
that you haven't connected with in a while, that you really need to reconnect with better. You know, even if you talk on a daily basis, sometimes you need to get deep down with your close friends. And this is a way to do it. And I challenge you to see if it doesn't make you feel better than by busy texting or sending a social media message. Watch the content of your social media, watch the amount of social media and replace some of that with a face-to-face. -face. And I promise it will make a big difference in how you feel for the rest of the day. So feel free to tell me any comments below about what you think about any of these pitfalls or the challenge, the face-to-face -face challenge, and we'll see what we come up with. Maybe there's other reasons to be on social media as opposed to just the pitfalls. Tell me if you see those too. I really enjoy your comments and I look forward to chatting with you again soon. So until then, be very blessed. Thanks y'all.